Now we're looking at the state again with the uh, two secondary amperage circulations. Get my time at all here. Okay. As we said then, we got about 4.9 times less current in the, uh, 140 ohms than the 0.5 ohm secondary. So that we can see from the math there, there's our 0.18 amps on phase three. Our, 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 uh, our I squared R losses on that coil must be the amperage squared divided times its resistance. Pardon my camera work, folks. And so we derive that we got point zero one six two watts of heat being released on primary and we got point eighteen watts of heat being released by the secondary for its I squared R losses and therefore we have 11 fold ratio of more energy going out than the energy going in. Similarly for the bottom coil we would obtain about two-thirds of that number or seven times the energy uh, going out and then going in. Now we want to show something interesting here. We're going to short the arc gaps out. When we short the arc gaps out, what will happen is that secondaries will no longer be resident. And they will consume only what their reactive state will allow to consume. But before we do that, we want to see what our primary state is. And I can see there we got 0.148 amp phase 1, 0.22 phase 2, and 0.178 phase 3. And our voltages are hovering on the one volt level. And now we're going to go in there and short out the arc gap. Short out our 36 milliamp consumption. Short out. 15 million. Notice that that went down to 15 milliamps. Short out that one. We got 1.9 milliamps. And our amperage circulation on our secondaries is vastly decreased. And as a result, we can see a whole new set of primary readings. Notice that when we did this, the stator line in between went down to 0 0.17 when we run this thing. We always note peculiarities. Well, the phasing has changed by shortening this out. And now the last thing that we want to do, we want to note right there and then what those circumstances are. We got 0.5 amps on phase three. We got 0.22 amps on phase one and 0.142 amps uh, in the middle. And what we want to show now is the fact we're going to not even allow any secondary current whatsoever to assume itself. And we'll go in there and unhook those amperage circulations. We have 5 on phase 3 and 0.23 on phase 1. Disconnect the top amperage circulation. Apparently it will change it all. Disconnect the bottom amperage circulation. And when we disconnected the bottom amperage circulation, we did see a little bit of a change. On phase one, went up to 0.27 amps, but phase three stayed at 0.5 amps. Now then, we're gonna do, so we've shown that when phase three is drawn no energy from its secondary, it's at drawn half an amp, but yet when it does draw energy from its secondary, it goes down to 0.18 of an amp. So everything is working in reverse common ferromagnetic transformers, especially in light of the fact that if it was a ferromagnetic transformer powering these arc gaps, 
We would have maximum amperage and not minimum amperage when we shorted the arc gap. Now then we have uh, gonna rehook them coil circulations back up and show one more thing. Shorts on the arc cap. Okay. Now we're back to our more minimal consumption. Once we've uh, obtained amperage circulation again of some 35 and 19 milliamps on above and below. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to disengage the bottom coil. Note that right now we got 36 milliamps and almost 20 milliamps. That would add 56 milliamps. I know if there's a better problem on that meter. That looks a little better. We're going to go in there and we're going to disengage the bottom coil. Notice that the amperage on the top coil increased when we did that, and of course we have about 350 volts if we multiplied that quantity by seven. Now we'll repeat the procedure in reverse. We'll hook them both back up. Well, let's, let's look at our input for that condition anyway. This is, that was the first embodiment. The second embodiment of the Tesla coil, well, I don't know which embodiment it was, but you can drive it either way with one coil or two, but when you drive it from the top, when you're getting almost all the same effect as if you're driving it from both of them, but each one drops. Okay, then. We're gonna go in there and repeat what we did just now. Then we hook the bottom coil back up. Now the bottom coil is hooked back up. So we can see where we take the magnetic field matters. We try to take it all out the top. So it's going to distribute itself out the bottom depending on where the load is. What we're going to do now though is disconnect the top coil, showing the 36 milliamps. Notice that the amperage on the bottom coil now actually went down to 14 milliamps. And so these are some of the particulars of the operation of the Tesla coil, and we'll try to make a better video performance of it in the next video.